Welcome, welcome. Well, you know what month it is. It's October. The only time I can walk out in public dressed like this. And it's time to review a scary movie. And with Halloween Kills coming out this week, I figured why not check out the one that started it all. Halloween, or John Carpenter's Halloween, is a 1978 independent American slasher film directed and scored and written by John Carpenter and co-written with producer Deborah Hill, and it is deemed as one of the greatest horror movies and slasher films ever made. So why don't we just slash our way through? The film opens with a brief opening title slash credit sequence showing a jack-o'-lantern accompanied by John Carpenter's famous theme. The film takes place in Haddonfield, California. I know it says Illinois, but it was filmed in California, so it counts. And it's on Halloween night in 1963. We begin with the POV of Michael Myers as he's stalking his sister with her boyfriend. And he gets his little friend. Jeez, Michael's sister banged her boyfriend at 40 seconds? I gotta pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. I gotta go. Will you call me tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Promise? Yeah. No, he won't. Then Michael gets his clown mask. Bravo 6. Going dark. And stabs his sister. Yeah, he's just pissed that she didn't take him trick-or-treating. They were giving out the good candy bars. Those, those gigantic ones. Michael then goes outside when his parents arrive, and from then on, Michael Myers was grounded with no parole. We fast forward 15 years later to 1978, on October 30th, where we see Dr. Loomis, played by Donald Pleasance, and a nurse named Marion Chambers, played by Nancy Stevens. As they drive to the local sanitarium to have Michael be taken to a hearing in front of a judge where he would be transferred to another sanitarium. Are there any special instructions? Just trying to understand what we're dealing with here. Don't underestimate it. Don't you think we could refer to it as him? Because it is scarier. Just ask Pennywise. Then they see several mental patients that are reenacting Singing in the Rain. I'm singing in the rain. Just singing in the rain. Dr. Loomis rushes out of the car into the rain to see the live performance, just as Michael leaps on top of the car and hijacks it GTA style. The next day on Halloween in Haddonfield, we see Laurie Strode, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, as a normal, innocent girl, but in 40 years, she'll be a paranoid, gun-toting grandma. As Laurie walks down the street, an 8-year-old boy named Tommy Doyle, played by Brian Andrews, walks up to her. Tommy tells Laurie not to go to the Myers house because something bad happened there once. As she drops the key her real estate dad gave her to leave under the mat, someone appears inside and looks through the front window at her. Tommy soon leaves after this and Lori walks on singing to herself when suddenly Michael shows up right behind her staring at her. Meanwhile, back at Smith's Grove, Dr. Loomis is debating with another doctor, Terrence Wynn, played by Robert Palin. Well, it was your patient, doctor. If precautions weren't strong enough, you should have told somebody. I told everybody! Nobody listened. Yeah, they were too busy texting. Sam Haddonfield is 150 miles away from here now. Now, for God's sakes, he can't drive a car. He was doing very well last night. Maybe someone around here gave him lessons. So, asylums have their own DMV? Interesting. Dr. Loomis angrily gets in his car and drives away. Later that day, Lori sits in English class and sees Michael standing outside. Yeah, he does the same thing out of Chuck E. Cheese. Meanwhile, at Haddonfield Elementary School, Tommy is leaving, carrying a large pumpkin, and it's followed by several bullies. Don't you know what happens at Halloween? Yeah, we get candy. Yeah, and you get yelled at by a Karen. It may be smashed, but at least you can make some pumpkin pie out of it. Then Michael jumps out and grabs one of the kids. Hey, you're not the kid I wanted. Michael then follows Tommy and drives off. I guess he's got bigger fish to stab. On the highway, somewhere between Smith's Grove and Haddonfield, Dr. Loomis stands at a telephone booth. You must be ready for him. 
If you don't, it's your funeral. He means that literally. Dr. Loomis notices a towing truck parked nearby in a grassy area. Inside he finds Michael's white hospital gown and the rabbit and red lounge matchbook the nurse had. And he doesn't notice the dead towing truck driver sunbathing in the nearby grass. Meanwhile, Lori is walking home with her friend Linda, played by PJ Souls, who says totally way too much. And it's annoying as hell. Anyways, they walk along with another girl named Annie Brackett, played by Nancy Loomis. No relation to Dr. Loomis. Hey Linda, Lori, why didn't you wait for me? Because you're the slowest. While they are talking, Michael Myers goes speeding down the street when Annie yells at him. Hey jerk! Speed kills! The fuck you say to me, you little shit! And drives off as he plans to kill her later. Lori and Annie continue on when suddenly Lori sees Michael hiding behind a bush ahead of them. Yeah, stalking is his way of meeting new people. Lori, dear. wants to take you out tonight. Yeah, he's taking you for sushi and you're the sushi. Looking behind her, she accidentally runs into Mr. Brackett, played by Charles Cyphers, Annie's father and the sheriff of Haddonfield. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Yeah, except we had more than one scare in 2020. At her house, Lori looks out of her window and sees Michael drying out his laundry. Meanwhile, Dr. Loomis arrives at the Haddonfield Cemetery with the gravekeeper when they discover that Judith's headstone is now missing. Goddamn kids. They'd do anything for Halloween. Yeah, I bet Logan or Jake Paul stole it for views. Later that day, Annie picks up Lori at her house to go babysitting, and they drive around for a while while smoking a joint. Yeah, it looks like Lori's a little rebellious. They spot Annie's father in front of the store. What happened? What? What happened? Oh, uh, somebody broke into the hardware store. Probably kids. Yeah, someone stole a William Shatner mask. Bye, Dad. Bye, Bye soon-to-be-dead daughter. After they leave, Dr. Loomis pulls up to the store and asks to speak with Sheriff Brackett, who says he will talk to him in a moment. Dr. Loomis stands waiting on the sidewalk as Michael Myers drives right past him. In Annie's car, Lori reveals to Annie that she has a crush on the mega chat himself, Ben Tramer. I knew it! <laughs> See, you do think about things like that, huh, Lori? <laughs> Shut up. He's cute! Don't worry, Ben Tramer will get his shining moment in the sequel. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dr. Loomis and Sheriff Brackett arrive at the abandoned Myers house. What is that? It's a dog. It's still warm. He got hungry. A dead dog? Ooh, John Wick is not going to be happy about that. Standing on the lawn, he could have seen inside. Damn, Dr. Loomis is packing heat. Now, time for some scary monologue. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. Yep, they're devil's eyes, all right. I would know. Look at mine. Unfortunately, the video ends here. Find out next. Dark Lord Reviews. Superstition.